Hello and welcome to my third emulation video and today we are going to talk about um, exactly what's on the screen. We're going to be talking about how to um, emulate PlayStation 2 games on PC. And if you have seen my uh, Duck Station um, video for the PlayStation 1, then you will be seeing a lot of this um, again. If, um, but if you're still curious, then uh, go ahead and hang out and we'll go through it step by step. And I actually have one more little um, tidbit of information for you guys for this video. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to PCSX2.net. I'll make it bigger. It's that right there, .net. And then you go up here and click on download. And normally this is not the case, but there is a warning uh, about the um, the stable releases um, not being out yet, or the most recent one. And so we're just going to go and get the nightly release right here. And I am on Windows, so um, I'm going to download this one, but as you can see it also works for Linux and Mac as well. Alrighty, so... Um, it opens up in 7-Zip. If you don't have 7-Zip already, it's a free uh, piece of software. It doesn't, um, doesn't cost you anything. It's really easy to use. Um, it's essentially an extraction software without getting too technical. So we're going to um, go here and extract. And what I also recommend you do is have a folder for each one of your consoles that you're, that you're going to be emulating. It makes everything a lot easier whenever um, you go to find stuff. And so we're going to look and find my folder that I want. So this one right here. And click OK. Alright, we can close that, close that, and now we're going to go to the folder that we just made. So here's the, fold, or the folder that we extracted to, so there it is right there. <clears throat> now this right here, the PCSX2-QT.exe, that's your executable, that's your emulator right there. One thing you are absolutely going to need is your BIOS files before you're going to be able to really do anything um, important. And I have those saved on my computer. And so we're going to make a new folder. Oops. BIOS. Paste all those in there, and then we're done with that. And we're pretty much halfway through the base installation of... Um, actually, we're through the base installation. Everything you need, um, including games, are um, already downloaded. Um, you can find these games, uh, even the BIOS files, using a Google search. I can't tell you where exactly they are, but it, it's not difficult to find them if you don't have them already. So, um, now we have the, the program open. This is the actual emulator. Um, whenever you first open it up, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and it says add game directory right here. Um, so, we're not going to look for that yet. We're gonna do. We're gonna um, tell the emulator where that it can find the BIOS files that it needs. So we're gonna go up here to settings, click on BIOS, and it actually already knows where they need to go. We can we can click browse and click on that folder, then hit select folder, and it knows where it's at already. So that's as if it doesn't automatic, automatically populate, then um, that's exactly how you do it. So now we go to the fun stuff. We, t we need to tell it where our games are. And so we're going to um, click on this button right here. We're going to go back to this folder and we're going to select that folder right there. And it asks, would you like to scan the directory curs recursively? And basically means it's going to look in any subfolders that's in that folder um, for the games that um, you want to play and you click yes. 
and now um, the game should show up. So we are done with that. And each one of these from here are ready to go. You can um, play them, you can change how you view them. Um, it's really, really simple. Um, trying to just pick them off the top of my head. San Andreas, that's a good choice. So you double click on it and voila. And every PS2 game that you download, if it's the right file type, I believe it's a .iso file, um, it should work. You don't have to do anything special to it. Um, one thing that is available, um, the more you get into emulators, um, I highly recommend doing this. But um, the more you get into emulators, you can actually download texture packs for each of the games that you're playing. <clears throat> And that, that makes them pretty, and you can, um, the only thing I've seen them do is aesthetics, um, so far, but, so we're going to, um, go up here to system, there's a few things, oops, I clicked the wrong one, so one is pause, that pauses the emulation, um, it's like pressing the start button, but it stops the entire thing no matter where it's at, you have a shutdown, and you click on shutdown, um, well, we'll get that, back to that in a second. You have your save states. Um, you can load your previous save states by changing your disk. You're actually changing the game. It goes back to the game directory. Um, pretty simple there. And so we're going to click shut down. Are you sure you want to shut down the virtual machine? Yes. And then it brings you back to the previous screen before you selected the game. Now, one thing that I do want to mention in my computer, I um, I built this computer um, earlier, or about middle of last year, so it's not old hardware by any stretch of the imagination. However, what I would recommend you do is, if you're doing this on a, um, on a laptop, get a really really big thumb drive and put everything on the thumb drive. You can just you can actually play it from the thumb drive, and the reason I say that is because if you look at the size of these games, well, we'll take San Andreas because we were just looking at it. The size of it, properties, the size of it is um, almost four and a quarter gigabytes. So if you, I mean, you guys can do basic math. If you do something like 30 games, 30 times, they're not all four gigabytes. Some of them are smaller, some of them are larger, but you guys are able to do basic math. <clears throat> if you have, you know, if they're four gigabytes a piece, they're not, some of them are less, some of them are more. That's kind of the middle of the road, but you do um, 30 games at um, four gigabytes a piece. That's 120 gigabytes easy and it's i'll be honest with you it's not hard to do um it's something i did myself and um if you go back and watch or you decide to do um, emulation for the original xbox um through x emu or um the i forget the name of the other emulator i don't i don't use it so i don't remember the name of it but some of those games are seven seven gig or up to seven gigabytes a piece so just something to think about whenever you're planning out um, if you need to add another drive or you just want to play a handful of games here and there. Um, just something to keep in mind um, while you're uh, installing all this stuff and getting prepared for it. So you, you don't have the um, quote unquote sticker shock. <clears throat> so now the um the other thing that i wanted to show you guys is something that um, i just recently found and we're going to go here so this website is called retro achievements and what has happened is uh, people have made these lists of achievements for retro games hence the title of the website real simple um and they have made integration into these emulators and this is my account right here um 
let's see here achievements my pages achievements there we go so the, these are some of the ones that I was working on um, this I believe all these were this morning and um, I show you that to show you this settings if you go to settings and then click on achievements and you got to click on enable achievements and then you click login type in your after you um after you sign up for an account there the the thing i like about the website is they're not trying to collect any information they're just like hey this is a achievement website where you can track all your progress these are achievements yada yada log in and that integrates your um, retro achievements account um, with the emulator <clears throat> and so if i was to um, load up i don't know kingdom hearts or something uh, whichever one of these not all games have these achievements but some of them do and I, i'm pretty sure that kingdom hearts is one of them i know incredible hulk ultimate destruction is another one but you can go through and as you are playing we'll close that so there you go as you're playing it does keep track um, while you are while you're playing just like if you were playing on X, um, Xbox one or PS4 or something it'll tell you all of your achievements that you're doing as you do them and honestly it's really cool I've been having a lot of fun with that um, and I hope you guys to do too alrighty from here there is one more thing that um, needs to be talked about in order for you to have the most pleasant experience possible while using the emulator and um, what good is a video game if you can't control it? So you're gonna um, go um, at any point, doesn't have to be on this page, but uh, at the top, click on settings, go down to controllers, and um, there's a whole lot of options here. Don't get um, too overwhelmed by it like I did at first. Um, but what I do is I click on this one right here and this brings up the controller. You can bind these keys to anything I have used um, third party PlayStation controllers. I have used a Super Nintendo controller. No, I'm not kidding. Um, I have used a Sega Genesis controller, um, all USB, um, able to be plugged into the USB. And if you like to get crazy, you can even, as you can see, um, by what's are the keys that are already, or the way the buttons are assigned here, you can actually use your keyboard. Um, if that suits you, great, fantastic. Um, that for me is a little bit too complicated, but I digress. And it's very, 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 very simple to do. Um, all you have to do, take your controller, make sure it's plugged in and turned on and all that kind of good stuff. And you go to each um, item here. We'll go to the D-pad first. We'll, all right, so for up, D-pad up left, D-pad left, right, down, left analog, up, or excuse me, up, analog is uh, up, left analog is left, right analog, right, down, down, and then your even your L3, then the R3, and then you just go through each one and assign it. Uh, L2, one, and it, it really is that simple. I'm just going through and uh, assigning each of these to the appropriate spot that I want them to be. Okay, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, one thing that I will suggest is 
assigning it to a profile for each controller. I'm going to copy all bindings from the currently selected profile. Yes. And then um, you go down here and you have the shared, which is the basically the default, and then the one that I just created. So um, that is getting the emulator set up, um, the essential pieces of the puzzle with the addition of the retro achievements. That's just something that I like. Um, like I said, you can um, find uh, texture packs and stuff like that online. Um, they usually come or you can find instructions on how to um, implement those. Download or uh, get the ROMs for your games and uh, load them up and have some fun. Honestly, I have been having a lot of fun with this. Um, I, <clears throat> I, my wife actually asked me, she's like, if you don't play all your, all your games in the cabinet anymore, why, why do you even have them? I'm, I'm like, look lady, I'm a collector. Okay, chill. <laughs> but in any case, so that's it. Follow, um, you can follow those step-by-step -step instructions. It's very, very simple. And I hope that you have as much fun doing this as I am. And, um, that's it for today's video. If you uh, like this video, throw a like on it. If you want to see more just like this, um, more retro gameplay um, and more emulator setups, then uh, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, work hard, play hard, game hard, but above all else, be excellent to each other. Bye-bye.